Thank you. Um, I am so happy that you are all here with me today. Um, I'm so uh, happy to be competing with icebergs for your attention right now. <laughs> yeah, and whales, and whales, and seals. and seals, and penguins, and all of these things. Um, for the people that are watching this video later, um, we are at Antarctica in Antarctica. Uh, so outside the window is like much more spectacular stuff going on than what you are seeing. Um, so we'll try and edit some of that in uh, so you can get some of that experience. Um, but right now I'm going to be talking about an extremely important topic uh, to not just developers, but to uh, really anyone that has ever had a job um, that's ever been in school just any human being. And um, it's called Keep Yourself Alive, Stopping the Effects of Burnout. And the reason I titled it that is because, uh, unfortunately, um, if you get to the level of burnout, uh, there's really not much uh, left, not many options for you. Uh, so just like Matthew just said, there's, there's a whole lot of stuff that I have done in my life. Um, the most important things on this slide, though, are that I have over 150 plus days on the year uh, on the road um, for the last 15 years as an average, um, and over 20 years experience in getting burned out. <laughs> so um, that's the reason. I mean, like all you you don't get the kind of resume I have at the age that I am without being kind of uh, a type A overworked workaholic kind of person. Um, so I am uh, very experienced in this. Um, first thing I want to start with is, uh, what is stress? A lot of us think we know what stress is, um, but like, it's, it's a thing that our body uh, goes through in many different ways. Um, stress, though, isn't necessarily good or bad. So it's really just the automatic response to any physical or mental demand that we place on it. Um, and we live in a stress-filled environment. Like, every day, um, this, this either breaks us or makes us cope with life's mundane ordeals. Like, right now, we're feeling stress because we're sitting in a room and there's spectacular things happening outside. And we're making micro decisions every second about should I be here, should I be there, should I look out the window, should I look at her, that kind of thing. This is causing the stress on our body that we're not even paying necessarily that much attention to consciously. Um, we can't avoid stress. That's really important. A lot of people say they want to manage stress, they want to learn how to deal with it, they want to do all certain, but no matter what we do, we can't actually avoid it. So all we can do is to dis understand what causes stress and help us to uh, work with that. Initially, the stress response in the body was a fight or flight thing. So that was marked by the outpouring of epinephrine and noroepinephrine uh, from the inner, adre inner adrenal glands in the body. And this increases your heart and respiration. It mobilizes sugar and fat to give you fuel, and then uh, increases your heart and respiration, and uh, it dulls your pain. So like, in some ways, uh, the people that are like, constantly in stressful situations, they don't even feel that they're in stress. They can like feel like their heart's racing a little bit, but they're not feeling anything. Um, your hypothalamus and your pituitary gland also slow down, and they trigger your outer adrenals to uh, secrete cortisol. So that's the clinical definition of what's happening when your body's under stress. But it doesn't matter if we're at work or play. Stress is that driving force that keeps us on our toes. It ensures that we push to be the best that we can be. Or it, after bereavement or a divorce, um, work 
is the third biggest cause of stress. So anyone that's been through a divorce in this room can tell you that's very stressful. Anyone that's had a death in the family can tell you that's very stressful. And if you're going through that at the same time that you're working, you're, you're doubling down. And if you have to go through all three of them in the same year, like some of us have had to do, <laughs> you're, you're uh, really tipping over. So over half of all workers believe that stress damages their health. As well as impacting people's health and well-being, it can also damage their social lives, though. So as I said, adrenaline is that chemical that's naturally produced as a response to stress. So people will chase adrenaline because adrenaline feels good, right? When you're, you're feeling that adrenaline pumping through your body, you're like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be an adrenaline junkie, you hear. So not all stress actually is bad. Like people that are going after that adrenaline high can be good in certain doses. And that's called eustress. So eustress is stress that is healthful. Um, it gives people a feeling of fulfillment. Can you think of some kind of stress that would be under this category? Roller coasters, that's a good one. Getting married. Getting married, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we, interestingly, divorce is the other side of it, right? Um, so, yeah, you stress is positive, it energizes you, and, but it's generally short term. Like that fight or flight scenario, it's, it, it leaves very quickly. Um, so, when you start a new job voluntarily, like when you've chosen, to go to a new place. You're excited on that first few weeks of work when you're learning all the new stuff, that getting that domain knowledge. That's you stress that you're feeling. If you receive a promotion, if you're in Antarctica, like we're under you stress right now. Like that stress we're feeling at the moment is you stress. So that's good. Um, and that having a, new, having a child, like that feeling when you don't know the, the, when it's gonna happen, that's you stress. The problem is, if you, just like anything else, if you go too far, if you're chasing it too much, if you keep your body in that state too long, then it will overcompensate and crash. So some people that just work out every single day, uh, which is a good thing, but if they just keep pushing themselves and keep pushing themselves and keep pushing themselves, uh, they'll turn, they'll tip over from you, like you stress into stress. So some stress is bad, and what we call that is distress. So the opposite of you stress is distress, and when you're in distress, you have great pain, anxiety, or sorrow, acute physical or mental suffering, or afflictions, or just trouble. So when you've caused your body to feel any of these things, then you are now in distress. And obviously, this feels unpleasant. We don't like being in distress. We, our, our energy is depleted. We don't want to go out and do things. And this, unfortunately, can be either short or long term. We're stuck. In, when we're feeling distress, it's a never-ending cycle because you don't feel good, so you don't want to make yourself feel better. And you don't know how, and you just feel awful. So it's, it's kind of bad. And, and things that can cause this are, as I mentioned, the death of someone significant, money problems, um, major injuries, unemployment, legal problems, abuse, getting fired, and unfortunately, if you are unemployed, then it's really hard to get another job. And if you're going through any of these other things, and you're depressed, under distress, then it's really hard to pull out of it. 
So when we are thinking about all of the things that can cause us personally stress, distress or eustress in our life, there's, there's probably a few things in common for ourselves. So what are these stressors? Like what are these things that cause us stress? Um, they, they actually are different because we're all different. So each person is affected in a different way. Um, a lot of them are activities and relationships that cause trauma to uh, other people's physical, emotional, or, or psychological self. Uh, some people uh, turn to alcohol and drugs, and those cause stress, but uh, distress. But it, for other people, they cause eustress. So everybody is different. But there are 10 that are common uh, causes of distress for pretty much everyone. And for those, uh, the number one is the lack of control. So if you're in a situation where you have an inability to influence the decisions around you, and I, I'm looking at the kids specifically in this room because I'm sure you feel this sometimes. Like the, the thing that probably makes you the most frustrated is when you don't feel like you have any say in what happens, right? Like if your parents are telling you, it's this way because I say it. Doesn't that make you feel frustrated? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so as adults, that doesn't change. It just gets worse because now we have more experience. We have the experience of adults, but now somebody else is telling us that we can't do the thing that we know how to do. And unclear job expectations is a huge one. Because if we come in somewhere and we're, again, we have this domain knowledge, we know what we're supposed to do, but then we don't know what we're supposed to do because nobody gives us any direction at all, it's, it's awful. Um, a dysfunctional workplace. This is my personal pet peeve, where the people around us aren't the right people. We don't have the right people on the team. You're, you're, you have like five rock stars and nobody's actually doing any work. <laughs> like, Because um, as Sean said earlier today, we need the people that will come in and be the nine to fivers and be happy for that and then go home. We don't need people that are um, just going to fight with each other and be cat catty. Um, a values mismatch. Values mismatches are very difficult. Like if you're working for a company and you just don't believe in their mission, um, if, you don't, if you don't believe in what you're being asked to create or do, um, it, it can be very difficult and especially hard when you're being paid to do something and you need the money, but you have to go in and take that money when you hate your job. Um, poor job fit. If you have a job that you've taken that does not match your skills or interests, or both, then that's going to cause you so much stress, you're going to actually lose productivity. And you're not going to do it well, and you'll probably end up unemployed, and the cycle begins again. Um, something with extremes of activity. So if you're in a place that is constantly a roller coaster, so while riding a roller coaster is fun, some place that you don't know from one week to the next if you're going to get paid, or you don't know what clients you're going to have from the next one week to the next, or even um, as a professor, like if you don't know how many students are actually going to show up to your classes, or if you're going to get published, or I mean, there's so many. You no, know, pick a job. There's something that causes that that roller coaster. Uh, lack of social support. We don't suffer from that in this room, thankfully, here. But in our own jobs, I'm sure there's been so many examples that you can think of where you just don't have the peer group around you that believes in what you're doing. And if you're coming to work every day or, or going home and people aren't supporting you, then, I mean, that's why I'm divorced. Because my, my husband didn't believe in the things that I was doing. And then lastly, work-life imbalance. 
So here's where a lot of people try to say, oh, your, your work and your life should be uh, balanced, and you should understand like everything that you do in perfect little buckets. Well, that doesn't work so well because we're not perfectly organized human beings and the world is integrated in such a way now. So it's, it should be work-life integration and we should learn what our world is for ourselves. So understanding how to give yourself the time that you need to be able to then serve others, but most people don't take the time to do that. So, unfortunately, with all of these things causing stress for us every single day, like so many micro moments of decisions that are constantly on top of us, we end up in burnout. And once you've gone over the cliff of burnout, which is like the medical definition of burnout, and there is one, is um, that it's an extended period of time where someone experiences exhaustion, a lack of interest in things, resulting in a decline in their job performance. So that's job burnout. Um, and it, a lot of this has to do with experiencing chronic stress. So s your body just never has a chance to come down. It never has a chance to relax. And in those situations, the demands being placed on you exceed the resources that you have available to deal with your stressors. Left unchecked, burnout can wreak havoc on your health, your happiness, relationships, and job performance. In order to catch burnout and combat it early, it's important to know what to look for. So what are those signs? What do you look for? It's the first thing, you're tired all the time. Like, no matter what, you just can't get enough sleep. You, even if you sleep until you wake up, you still need to take naps. You're still tired all day. You don't want to do anything. Nothing sounds good to you. You're not motivated. Your favorite things are just not, they're not interesting anymore. You just, you're just bored and disinterested. You become more of a dissolution cynic than you already were. Uh, I recognize that we're already, uh, most of us are developers in this room, so we're all pretty snarky people. Um, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, when, when like everything you say becomes more and more negative or combative or like you just don't have anything positive to say because you just don't have the energy. Your brain stops working. It's just constant brain fog. Burnout and chronic stress can interfere with your ability to pay attention and concentrate. When we're stressed, our attention narrows to focus on the negative element that we perceive as a threat. And in the short term, this helps us deal with the problem at hand but our bodies and brains are designed to handle this in short bursts and then return to normal. Um, but when the stress re becomes chronic, this narrow focus continues for a long time and we have difficulty focusing on anything else. So this fight or flight tunnel can negatively affect your ability to solve problems and make any decision. You may find that you're more forgetful and have a harder time remembering things which then makes your work suck. So if you're not sure whether you're burned out, compare your job performance now to your job performance a year ago and the year before that. If, if, because burnout tends to happen over an extended period of time, measuring yourself over time is usually the easiest way to notice it. Um, and we're terrible at understanding ourselves. So if we haven't seen this kind of thing happening in ourselves, then uh, just looking, like if you used to be the rock star and now you're barely scraping by, then, then that is a sign. You, you just can't deal with being around people. 
And that doesn't have anything to do with being an introvert or extrovert. It's just like this plays out in, in one of two ways. Either you're having a lot of conflicts with people and start getting into arguments all the time, or you withdraw and you stop talking to anyone. So you might think that you might find that even with when you're physically there, you're just disengaged. You stop taking care of yourself. So you stop e eating properly, you stop showering, you stop, uh, you might start taking sleeping pills to get to sleep and drinking a lot of caffeine to wake up. Uh, and just like your entire house is covered in Doritos wrappers. Um, this does not mean you are a developer. <laughs> this means that there is a problem. <laughs> um, you're preoccupied with work. So, uh, personal story. Um, when I was uh, in the heart of Evernote, like when, when we were like really going at it, um, I was Evernote, 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 like every other word out of my mouth was Evernote. And uh, it was... Actually, it got so, I mean, like, I was wearing, like, the Evernote t-shirts, Evernote socks, had my Evernote bag, had, like, everything was Evernote. Uh, even my husband and my sister-in-law worked in the company with me. So, like, my family was there. Like, but uh, when we had our security breach, uh, I, I walked into the office because I was there 24-7 like, for that cleanup. And uh, on, like, the 20th day after the breach, I broke my foot just walking into the office. My health had gotten so bad that I I broke my foot because it was, it turned out I had uh, like a, a tumor growing in my intestines that I hadn't paid any attention to. And it was actually Christina over there that had me go to the doctor um, because she'd been seeing me in snapshots and noticed that there was something wrong. But the, I had not paid any attention to my health at all because I was so preoccupied with making that company work. Nothing, nothing makes you happy. This is a tendency to feel less happy and satisfied with your career and with your home life. You might feel dissatisfied or even stuck when it comes to whatever's going on at home in the community or with your social activities. So if somebody's telling you, just be happy, just smile, just do that, it doesn't help. Then your health starts to suffer. So all of these things added up together, like you're not eating, you're not taking care of yourself, you're not doing all this stuff, obviously your health's gonna start to suffer but the things, like, it can create real health problems like digestive issues, uh, heart disease, depression, obesity. And while stress didn't give me cancer, it actually made my body so weak that it was able to develop cancer that was already, like, I was predisposed to it. And I know other people that have gotten fibromyalgia, that have, have gotten early onset diabetes and, and other things like that uh, because their body was predisposed to something and they got so weak um, and so malnourished. So what's the difference between stress and burnout? Uh, well, with stress, it's over-engagement. You have reactive emotions and there's this sense of activity, like you're, uh, you're wanting to do stuff. And, like you have diminished energy and anxiety, and it's physically tolling on you. And when you're in that so long, you end up with burnout, where you're disengaged now. You have little or no emotion, because everything's just, it's like you're through a wall of fog, and you're just helpless. You, you have no motivation, and it leads to depression. If you're not already depressed, it, it, you will be. And then it's just emotionally told. Like there's, you have nothing left. 
there's three categories of, of what happens. You, you end up with sleep problems, appetite changes, headaches, shortness of breath, high blood pressure, anxiety, depression, tension, irritability, angry outbursts, and forgetfulness, lack of concentration, disorganization, indecisiveness, and pessimism. These are not great things, right? And, and it's a cycle, too, because like if you have any of these, then you're just going to feed the negativity back into yourself and keep yourself down. So how do you pull out of it? Well, a lot of people will tell you, just like do yoga, have, like, <laughs> have stress management, and like, just like, oh, um, <laughs> like, I mean, the problem is, I mean, while all of this is wonderful, if you're already burned out, you're not going to listen to them. You're not going to hear them. It's not going to get through. So what can you do? The most important thing you can do, and I'm going to go through a list of the things that a person who is burned out should do, but I'm going to tell you right now that the most important thing that anyone who is burned out can have is somebody to notice that they are burned out. Because anyone that is in this situation needs someone else to pull them out of it. They need other people to knock on the door, pull them out, constantly ask how they are, constantly remind them that is, there is a world outside of themselves. Because if you are stuck in your own brain with all of the negative with all of the, the money problems, the stress, the, the I lost my job, I let it, it, it can pull you down so far that you can never get up. So if somebody gives you a tether outside of yourself, then that is the best thing that you can do for somebody with burnout. So now the first thing I'm going to say is chill out. So if you are burned out, if you are the burned out person, give yourself time to work through it. Just be as easy on yourself as you can. There's no, there's nothing wrong with you. Just chill out. Then create that life outside of work. Thank to Christina, I actually built a life outside of Evernote. And I wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for her literally, like actually literally pulling me outside of my house and getting me around and getting me into clubs and getting me involved in the Las Vegas community. Get enough sleep. Throw away your alarm clock. Get, night, get uh, blackout shades and start sleeping until your body wakes you up. Eventually, you'll get into a real rhythm and you won't need as much sleep but if you are burned out or even just at the stress level right now you probably need around 14 hours of sleep in a night and once you're better you might get down to six it's kind of amazing how your body needs to recharge get organized anyone that knows me personally knows that i am not the most organized person but when you, uh, but one of the things that I do do is uh, I make sure that I have one thing every day that is my priority because priority means one. You should not have multiple things on your priority list. <laughs> um, so. Uh, make sure that you are doing one thing at a time and not multitasking. Uh, and that's how I organize. Notice your patterns. So, uh, like everyone has certain tells that they have. They, they feel different ways throughout the day. They're doing things. And so journaling is a great way to do that. So this is actually my way that I do journaling. Um, it's my emotion journal. So like throughout the day, I'll say like, okay, I'm feeling stressed on however, for at what time, what caused that? What was the trigger for that? And soon I'll start to understand like, okay, so on this day, 
I felt stressed or I was feeling forgetful or whatever. And then I'll write next to it, uh, this is what I noticed about that. This is when I felt disinterested or this person really made me feel frustrated or something like that. And it really, then I can measure it over time to see how that works. Find the cause. Because once you start noticing things, a lot of times we're beating ourselves up because we think it's our fault. Sometimes it's, it really is the other guy's fault. Sometimes it's something that happened when we were a kid that, that we didn't even remember until we started really thinking about it. Like, I am scared to death of escalators. <laughs> I know it's weird, but like every time I try and get on an escalator, I'm like this. <laughs> and then I have to get it because my mom screamed at me when I was five years old because I was holding pillows that were bigger than me and I couldn't get on the escalator. And now, even though I know that's why I'm scared of it, it still causes me stress every time I get on an escalator. So just because you know the root of something doesn't mean that you've solved it. You just have to accept it and be like, all right, I'm going to tell people, it. you go ahead. <laughs> it's going to take me a second. So understanding what your patterns are, what causes you stress, and then figuring out something to do with it, uh, do about it, that's all you really need. And then know when to fold them. Sometimes you just have to leave. Like, if you're in a situation uh, that is constantly causing you stress, if it's poor job fit, if it's a really bad work environment, you just have to get out. Because you, there's things outside of you that you can't fix, and you have to accept that. And you have to make the decision for you. So with all of those things, um, you can change that distress into you stress. Because it's really a fine line between the two. And that can really turn you around. So um, here's some resources that are really awesome. Um, some of you I know already use these. Uh, Headspace uh, is a great app uh, for doing daily meditations. Stop, Breathe, breathe Think is also one. Sleep Bot helps you to measure uh, your uh, how well you've slept at night. Uh, do nothing for two minutes.com is exactly that. <laughs> Um, it, it just like tries to get you to do nothing on your computer for two minutes. Uh, noisily and calm uh, play background uh, white noise on your computer. And Seven Cups is a great site uh, for finding uh, free uh, people to just talk to online. They're, they're not licensed therapists, they're just other people like you, uh, but they're willing to confidentially talk when you need somebody else. So uh, if you are burned out or you know you know somebody that is, uh, please ask for help. And make sure, like, try and think and see if there's somebody that's, that's like you haven't heard from in a while that needs to be really active and reach out to them because it's, it's kind of important. Um, so thank you very much. And now go and enjoy the ice cream.